a time lapse video is looking to the west, showing Mount Charleston and the Red Rock Peaks and some of the Sierra Nevadas there to the west. And it just, you know, every time that I watch these videos, I can like picture in my mind like the very tops of the redwoods of sequoias out here, you know, a big green canopy being visible from our location here. And and just what if, what if this is actually a stump? You know, what if Mount Charleston is just a stump? I just, whenever I go through some of these videos like this, I can't help but try to imagine, you know, that at one point, some of those, you know, sequoias before they locked them all down might have been visible from our location here. And, you know, if y'all remember correctly, just a few years ago, the sequoias were burning and we were seeing videos like this, you know, that were showing these giant sequoias burning from the inside out, folks. You know, that's, this, this is not normal. It's not normal for, for trees to burn from the inside out. And, you know, I didn't hear a, too much of a big outcry from anybody back in 2020 when this was going on. You know, people were just so busy with politics and bullshit and everything else that was going on to even really care. And it's just, this is not normal, okay? This is just not normal to see a tree burning from the inside out, okay? And I just, and there's an, another article here that talks about it. Um, this is talking about the redwood trees. And, and it says here that tannin does not burn easily. A natural flame retardant is the tannin that gives the redwoods their reddish color and also protects them against disease, fungi, and insects. Redwoods also have little resin or pitch, which are highly flammable and lead other types of trees like tan oaks, firs, and pines to burn much quicker. So there's not something these, these, these should not have burned so easily as they did there during that fire. And they shouldn't have been burned from the inside out. And it just, I'm not understanding, you know, why some of the toughest trees in the world would burn like that from the inside out. And this is a pretty interesting article here. It count, you know, it, it talks about the fire and where it started and it originated from this little triangular set of fires going on here right that was supposedly caused by uh it says the czu lightning complex fire grew rapidly from a trio of remote blazes into a conflagration con conflagration that consumed almost all of big basin and much of the santa cruz mountains just it, it just sad to me that you know they can continue on the path that they're continuing on when it comes to weather modification and stuff and it's just and, you know, they talk about cloning. Supposedly, they're going to be like, or they have been cloning, you know, as a key to fighting climate change. This was before the fires. This was a year before the fires. And it just, they talk about the role of fog in this article here, too. And how, you know, the fog helps with the forest greenery and helps to keep them alive. And then you have all these weather modification agencies and, and stuff operating full full speed out there in California, dissipating fog off of airports and everything. You, you know, and you don't think that maybe that would have an effect on some other areas around the airports that may be using fog dissipation techniques and involving radars and different things. I mean, there's another file here that I have too that talks about that. And this was from Acquiesce. This was rain aid, which was something that was put together to help save the Horn of Africa and their drought situation. It was it was quite a thing. And this is another file here that talks about uh, oceanic rainfall acquisition. And this is uh, talking about Quetar and how, and they very proudly boast about their bringing rain to this area, several rain events. And I'll put links in the descriptions to all of these different articles here, but it talks here in this whole rain aid uh, information. It talks about technology for rain. Acquiesce has tested the technology which utilizes an electromagnetic wave form that can influence weather patterns remotely. This signal can be launched multiple times at a moving weather system to adjust its direction and velocity, directing the weather. Okay. Generally, the signals are launched from ground-based servers and triangulate on a moving rainfall system, utilizing a satellite feedback loop to observe, review, and relaunch signals Multiple adjustments are created to influence pathways of the atmospheric rivers of precipitable moisture. So controlling our atmospheric rivers. Just, it, it's just sad to me. The signal can be launched multiple times at a moving weather system to adjust its direction and velocity, directing the weather. 